This is a Dell Studio XPS 1340, which I picked out of a trash some time ago and subsequently ordered some spare parts for out of China. And I must say, this is, has to be the most mixed bag of a laptop that I've ever seen. It has just such a weird arrangement of nice issues and horrible design flaws that it's just uh, on the brink of being silly. So, so, so for starters, it's a pretty nice uh, 2010-ish laptop with, uh, I think it's a T9500 CPU and uh, an NVIDIA G GeForce uh, 9400G, I think, kind of lowish range dedicated GPU, but it's quick enough. Does all the video hardware acceleration stuff anyway. And uh, it's got a nice set of parts, a nice uh, performance. I've fitted it with an SSD, it's got an internal card reader, three audio jacks, which is getting ever more uncommon these days. And uh, I think it's got stereo microphones there, integrated webcam, and a nice protective cover over the screen. And that about sums up the nice features. The most obvious horrible fault in this machine is just look at this keyboard. How are you supposed to clean this? You have these little ridges there on the keys. And I have these medical wipes which I usually use for keyboards, but... Yeah, you, you would literally need to go in there with a toothpick in order to be able to get anything out of that little ridge. It's just silly. There's no reason for that kind of key arrangement. It, it, it offers no advantage over the traditional slanted key. It just makes it gather all kinds of horrible crud in there. The next most annoying, uh, horrible design aspect of this computer is that uh, Dell have gotten really evil when it comes to batteries in it. I ordered a cheap Chinese battery for it, and uh, at the moment it is charging and it is in sleep mode. But uh, if you turn this on, if we take a look over there, you can see that it is charging at 43 watts, which is just fine. But if we unplug the power cord for a moment, plug it back in, and turn the computer on, you are presented with this horrible screen which requires user input in order for it to continue booting. Now, it, it actually is lying to you as well because it says that the battery cannot be identified and the system will be unable to charge the battery. Well, in that case, I really sincerely do wonder what's using 84 watts of power in this computer because it's obviously charging the battery. If you go ahead and actually boot, after passing through the non-disableable error message, which really carries no meaning except making you decide to buy a genuine Dell battery. By the way, there are plenty of reports on the internet of this message popping up with genuine Dell batteries. Right, so we now booting in the OS, and if we unplug the charger for a second, and just put it back in, It'll actually keep charging. Well, that's weird. Every other time I've done that, it's actually stopped charging the battery as soon as you've unplugged it and uh, let it run for, run on battery for a little while. But uh, apparently that behavior has changed now. <laughs> well, I suppose that's a good thing. But either way, it, with its prior behavior, you could actually just uh, put the computer into sleep mode and uh, reconnect the charger and it would ch start charging again and it would charge as long as the computer's turned off so that message is simply a lie and it's very obviously a software limitation because it's charging just fine it runs on, runs on the battery yeah the evil computer OEs the next horrible sound on this thing is these hinge covers are just uh, it's an aluminium strip running along the back side of a computer. Now, these aren't attached anywhere down here. So they get this horrible gap going there as long as it gets a bit old. I don't think this computer has been horribly abused. It's just kind of gotten sloppy with time. 
Next bad point, of course, is body touch buttons, but hey, you can't get away from that these days. And beyond that, I, I really like this laptop. I just wish it didn't have these horrible design issues. Oh, yeah, and another uh, issue, which uh, I personally take a large uh, problem with, since uh, I, I'm a bit of a free software guy, is that uh, this computer actually ships preloaded with non-disablable spyware because uh, it comes with a computrace and uh, for those who are not even know, computrace is this uh, theft protection thing which uh, in a way is good for some consumers but it cannot be disabled unless you are the original owner of a machine and if you, like me, buy second-hand computers or pick them out of a trash and you have a computrace activated from factory uh, you are basically out of luck and that even goes if you buy, you know, a second-hand laptop from the original label and they forget to call Computrace and have it disabled. They could just uh, report it as stolen. And <laughs> you could have a police knocking at your door without being any, any the wiser. And this uh, software, is, it's basically a rootkit. Uh, when you launch into Windows, it will actually launch a few uh, programs. It will force itself into memory and it will actually show up in the task manager it will keep writing itself to your C drive and auto launching and there's basically nothing you can do about it unless you're a real trickster so that's just I think that's disgusting behavior, no software should be able to do that now I'm not too bothered by the prospect of police knocking down my door since I did acquire this computer by completely legitimate means it was on its way to be scrapped but what really bothers me with Computrace is it actually plants itself as an application on your computer which will run automatically, which is able to not only run code on your computer, but it's actually allowed to bypass all and every kind of security you have and download automatic updates if it so desires. Now just imagine for the sake of imagination, that there's a security breach at Computrace. What if someone were to push an update to cause this to become even more malicious than it already is? Hell, I, I frankly do not even trust Computrace enough to allow them to run code on my machine. I, I just think the entire prospect is ridiculous. If you google around this phenomenon a bit more, you will also find out that it's very common for Dell computers to actually ship with this software without the customer even being aware that it exists. So that means that you have millions of computers around the world running unknown software by a publisher that uh, the customer has never been familiar with, that they have not uh, agreed to sign any licensing issues with, they do not decide to have on their machine, but yet it's uh, continuously updating itself and putting new code inside. Code which you frankly cannot trust. The code which is stored in a hardware chip in the computer, which uh, boots itself as a root kit and writes itself onto your hard drive without your permission in order to execute itself. To me that's just out there. Ab absolutely unacceptable behavior for, for, for any application. And e even if you are the original owner of this machine, uh, you're not going to be able to uh, disable this unless you have the original receipt which you purchased the computer with, which who, who, how many people keep them for more than a couple of years? Well, I do, but I am the exception. And even if you are able to convince Comp Computrace to disable the service for your machine, you will still have this software running. It, it will just be instructed by them not to do anything. I mean, how insane is that? They will not even remove it from your hardware. It will still be there. It will still load itself onto your hard drive. It will occupy system resources, and it will keep listening out in case there's, you know, anything they would wish to do with your computer. 
Well, that doesn't sound dodgy at all now, does it? Moving on. Beyond that, I think this is a really nice laptop. It has good audio for what it is. Pretty good keyboard, save for the silly indented keys. It's even backlit, actually. And a really nice form factor, except it has the silly hint which goes beyond the screen like that. A really good connectivity too, and you know, once, mine's got a broken slot loading CD drive. And it's actually even got eSATA, so you can actually hook a hard drive up to it quite quickly if you want to. It's also got pretty good uh, access if you want to service it. As long as you don't want to take the main board out, you just remove the entire bottom plate and you get access to pretty much everything. I know this computer was scrapped because uh, it has some mechanical damage in this corner and I didn't get this panel with it because it was probably ruined. There's a crack in the metal work underneath there. And the entire computer is actually made out of metal, which is a really nice touch. Especially since if this was a relatively cheap machine when it was new, I think it was about $800 or something. But when you get this board out, metal plate out, you basically have access to everything. You have your RAM, you have your cooling fan, you have your hard drive over there, and all, all your ancillary cards. It, it even comes with a, uh, w1 it's got uh, some kind of 3g integrated into it you can slide a sim card into the back of it i actually haven't tested if that works but uh, the, the reason for this computer being scrapped was actually kind of amusing because uh, it, it was a purely user error it has a uh, an nvidia chipset and uh, the cpu heatsink is located here with a little extension going over to the north bridge and a heat pipe going back to the fan and heatsink assembly and uh, the previous owner had made a pretty grave mistake, actually two of them. Uh, they had installed... This computer probably had some thermal issues because the fan was clogged. And they'd gone ahead and uh, replaced the cooling paste on it. But uh, they had uh, not realised that uh, they had all <laughs> had to replace the thermal pads for the north bridge when doing so. They had actually put a thermal paste instead of a cooling pad on the north bridge. And that was causing the machine to overheat and uh, uh, just randomly shut off as these north bridges tend to do. They don't just slow the computer down like if you have a thermal issue on your CPU or GPU. But it would just randomly turn off. And you can see how there was a burnt blob of cooling paste on it where it had just uh, been overheating. They'd also been done the grave mistake of using uh, Arctic Silver cooling paste on a pure bare dye circuits which had little uh, surface made to components, resistors and capacitors on the top so I had to really clean the GPU out in order for it to work properly since Arctic Silver 5, it isn't really conductive out of the box but uh, I assure you it goes conductive over time and I've even had uh, an amplifier blew up on me when I did the mistake of installing Arctic Cooling, Arctic Silver 5 on the power outputs. It simply turned so conductive over time that it got very hot and essentially turned the transistor's plastic case into coal, since it was, since it was passing so much uh, current past the uh, uh, shims, the isolation shims on the transistor. So. Yeah, don't use Arctic Silver 5 on anything which, I don't know, isn't your normal desktop CPU or GPU which has an integrated metal heat spread because if you get it on any component you're going to run into issues down the road. I suppose that will more or less round it up. That's the story of this little trash pick Dell, which I'm probably going to use at work. It's a really nice computer and I'm going to have massive use of the integrated HDMI and display part there. I think it's even got a gigabit Ethernet. And again, pretty high spec machine for its price and age. Anyway, thank you for watching. Cheerio.